everyone. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thank you so much for joining us for nine on the positive side this weekend. One North Carolina teenager is setting her eyes on a goal that could take her to potentially new heights. 14 year old Aliyah Martin is training to become a pilot. She's working on getting her private license. Martin is most often seen flying around Greensboro with her flight instructor, and she already has a plan for how she's going to use her skills in the future. My dream job is just to fly and possibly travel. Um, I, I would like to be a flight instructor to help people, um, especially people like me. The minimum age to get a private pilot license is 17 years old. She still has a few more years left on that, but she definitely has a good head start on her future. High Point is home to the oldest family run bicycle shop right here in North Carolina. And as Chad Tucker shows us, its success has a lot to do with the lovebirds who've been running it for more than 60 years. We're the oldest family owned bike shop in North Carolina. We will soon be 100 years old. Danny Jennings' dad started the shop in 1927. Danny was crazy for bicycles back then, too. And oh yeah, crazy yeah. for Dolly. We've been together since we were kids. We grew up together. We went to church together all our lives. We went to school together. And I'll never forget the first time he took me out for a long ride. I had no idea how far we were going. That ride has lasted now oh, yeah. through 60 years of marriage. You just get up in the morning and you take one day at a time. 10 kids. There's 26 and a half years between the first and last. 15 grandchildren. But they just kept coming along. And four great grandchildren. They all know how to ride a bike. And their journey. To do the one side, you gotta do the other side. Included working together. Right here, side by side, in the bike shop. How about 12 in the back? All these years. That was before the great grandchildren came along. And we're here six days a week. Of course, we're in church on Sunday. You have a purpose every day. So you just want to achieve in this. The key to keeping a family business riding smoothly. I'll send you a text as soon as they're ready. I think because we are a close family, it hasn't changed like a team. And it's better than a team because we all get along. <laughs> Two of their sons are part of the business. Or do you want Dale or Derek to help you? Of course, the boys here are taking it over. They're doing a lot of the real high-end stuff. He loves it. He loves it. He enjoys it. He can tell you anything about an antique bike you ever wanted to know. I still ride a bike. I still love to ride a bike. I mean, I'm getting old. But it's just, it's just so great to get out and ride a bike. And that's the key to success in life and love. I would say we hadn't spent one or two nights apart in all these years. Never stop pedaling. We've just been together all the time. And you thought this story was about bikes. <laughs> in High Point, North Carolina, I'm Chad Tucker. It's, it's, it's been great. It hasn't been great. What a special story. Now in New Bern, kayaks and paddles hit the water as part of the Beartown Battle Battles. Kayakers raced on the Noose River at Lawson Creek Park in two and six mile races last week. It was all to raise money for a local nonprofit who supports people with neurodegenerative diseases. We want to make sure that we are able to create a task force of people in these specific lanes where they come together and basically work on individual cases where we have someone, per se, that has ALS. Well, we're going to bring all the right people in the room to discuss the case and really take away that workload of the person that has the disease and their family members. The money will be raised to help people pay for some of their medical and personal expenses. And if you were out in Moorhead City, you might have caught some of the second annual Big Rocks Kids Tournament and saw some of the shirt designs this year. Not in your side, Cheyenne Pagan has more with the young artist who created them. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, point, point, point. Okay. Allie's mom, Holly, says she encouraged both of her daughters to enter the junior artist competition. When my mom sent me the, um, the Instagram post, I was really excited because I've never um, entered any 
art competitions. Allie tells me she's been painting since she was five years old, so when it got down to it, she got to work. She started studying the Carteret County um, map, and then she decided that she wanted to incorporate that, and so she did that, and then she started adding the blue marlin into it. She worked on and off for a week or so. With the map, I uh, saw, I didn't know what color to use, so sargasm weed um, came to mind, which looks like the map. And all that hard work paid off in the end. They sent it off and ended up winning the competition. Now they say it's surreal to see people wearing Allie's design. It's hard to believe because the Big Rock is such a big deal. Even though we're from Charleston, it's a big thing across the East Coast. And this is just the first step for her future. I want to be an artist and sell my artwork. This is just such a big, big deal. You, you've started, started off your career big time. And that was our Cheyenne Pagan reporting for us. Now out in Greenville, a popular concert series called Sunday in the Park continues to bring out so many people to town common. Rebecca Todd is one of many to hit that big stage when those days come around. She's a graduate from ECU and says Greenville has played such a big role in pursuing her dreams. I mean, I lived two blocks away on Summit Street when I was, you know, living here and going to school and stuff. So to come back and have my band and to be able to look back on 10 years of work, um, it feels really good. And of course, there will be more Sundays in the park concerts this summer. We have those dates on our website at WNCT. Com. Now over in Carteret County, a local nonprofit is asking for donations to help children right here in ENC. Martha's Mission Cupboard is asking for non-perishable food items that children can snack on, like chips, applesauce, and pudding, or even easy meals to make while they're at home, like instant mac and cheese cups. Manager Ginger Wade says it's important to make sure children will stay fed while they are not in school for the summer. They need to have something on hand that they can grab. If they get hungry, they can nibble on it. And they, that this bag is that. They can put this in their room and have something to go back to and always know they have something to eat. People can drop off food at their location in Moorhead City at 901 Bay Street. That's also available on our website. Just ahead, a look at some popular places right here in Eastern North Carolina as we continue living local. Plus, we've all been there before, being nervous before taking a test, how one teenager managed to get a perfect score on one of the biggest tests in her life. WNCT is Living Local. Our Living Local series continues in Onslow County. We're taking you to a gem along the Crystal Coast. Now to your side, Cheyenne Pagan takes us to downtown Swansboro and tells us everything it has to offer. They don't call it the friendly city by the sea for nothing. There are tons of food and fun available for everyone to enjoy. One of those fun activities could be heading over to Shark Tooth Island on a kayak or paddleboard. There are lots of places to rent water sporting equipment here in town to get there, like at Swansboro Paddleboarding and Kayaking. But if you're more of a land person, there are historical sites and fun shops to explore along Front Street and all throughout the town. Or you could even eat at one of the many local restaurants restaurants instead. One of those restaurants is Saltwater Grill, located at the end of Church Street right by the water. In addition to offering seafood like Mahi Mahi, Fried Flounder, and Alligator Bites, they also offer a second story view of the White Oak River. So while enjoying your food, you're able to take in the beautiful scenery of the coast. But workers at Saltwater Grill say it's something else that makes this town so special. The people makes the town. That's what make us what we are. The people that come out, the people that support us, the family that come out, and they just have a ball. You know, it's just, it's just good energy all around Swansboro. Some other popular places to grab a bite to eat include the Borough and Bamboo Asian House. So whether it's food or fun, you won't run out of things to do in this town. In Swansboro, Cheyenne Pagan 9 on your side. Now let's take a trip to Washington. There are so many popular places and one of those is called Bill's Hot Dogs. Check it out. To many, it's a place to grab a quick bite at. For others who live outside of Washington and even out of state, it's a place that everyone recommends. 
A lot of our customers have come here with their, their a lot of old people have come here, they've been here with their parents, and it's just a, it's like a tradition for somebody to bring, come here and bring their grandkids or bring their kids. Something everybody's done for years. Boyd says no matter the age, customers enjoy the atmosphere of the town while grabbing a hot dog along their journeys. Now we're going to tell you about Williamston in Martin County. Nine in your sides, Adriana Hargrove shows us two businesses who survived during the pandemic, all thanks to community support. Between hook hand breweries, one of a kind flavors and cakes by Becky's delicious desserts made from scratch, both these local businesses say they love serving their community. Hook Hand Brewery opened in December of 2019 and Cakes by Becky opened in August of 2020. From specialty birthday cakes and wedding cakes to cupcakes to even homemade chicken salad, Cakes by Becky has plenty to offer. Besides offering something sweet, Williamston also has something for beer lovers. And Williamston's only brewery, Hook Hand Brewery Tap Room, offers one of a kind flavors and ingredients that are made on site. Those ingredients come from local farms here in the east. I'm all about tasting new things. I want to try flavors I've never had before. And the way I produce them, when they're gone, they're gone. You're never going to have them again. I love doing wedding cakes. There's just something about, people say, doesn't it make you nervous to do somebody's wedding cake? It doesn't. It, it's like you just, I, I want it to be perfect. Some popular items at the bakery include 12 layer cakes and cheese pennies. And the most popular item at the tap room is the sour watermelon beer. For more information on Hook Hand Brewery and Cakes by Becky, you can head to our website at WNCT.com. In Williamston, Adriana Hargrove, 9 on your side. Now we're heading back to the beautiful Crystal Coast, highlighting what makes Atlantic Beach so special. We know about the beach there, of course, but there are so many gems in the town of Atlantic Beach. Some that carry so much tradition, like the Captain Stacy Fishing Center. It's been around for more than 60 years. You can't miss it when you get over the bridge to make your way into town. It offers all kinds of full day, half day, shark trip, shark fishing trips, live bait, and so much more, all carried by family tradition. Cap Stacy was my father. I named all the businesses after him. And uh, been that way forever. And he used to fish for a business too. In fact, that's where I got started at with him. I was about this big. So we have a lot of repeat business. Some people have been going with us, I don't know how many years, been going with us forever. But they keep coming back. There's also a gift shop you're looking at right now with lots of things for you to browse. For more information on the Captain Stacy Fishing Center, including their fishing trips, head to our website, WNCT.com. Coming up at 9 on the positive side, an 87-year-old man is looking to show others you're never too old to set new records. Plus, a fourth grader is beating some of the world's best at her age at a popular game. Welcome back. Many people want to leave their mark in history. One Wisconsin man is looking to make a memory of a lifetime, though. Check it out. Dale Gray Beard Sanders is on a journey to paddle down the entire Mississippi River to the Gulf of Mexico. Once he reaches the Gulf, he will be the oldest person ever to paddle the entire river at age 87. Yeah, 87 years old, guys. Sanders has completed multiple feats, such as hiking the entire Appalachian Trail and hiking from one rim to another and back in the Grand Canyon. Sanders says there's more than meets the eye when it comes to these great feats. Another reason is it's a way for me to just stay in condition. I, I'm trying to do some pretty large adventure every year. And I've been doing that since 2015, first time I paddled the Mississippi River. Sanders says the first thing he's going to do once he reaches the Gulf is he's going to give his wife a big hug. A shot at perfection does not happen often, but one teenager in Chicago embraced this challenge. At just 14 years old, Grace Murray took the SAT exam and found out she got a remarkable score. In fact, it was a perfect 1600. Murray says the rare feat has been a rewarding experience. This is one step closer to my dream job at NASA or SpaceX or one of those great companies. Uh, being an astronaut, working on rocket ships, it's always been my dream. And now I feel like it's definitely much closer and within reach. 
That's awesome. Great for her. Murray says she used online tools to help her study. The rising high school junior will have to retake the test with her classmates next spring, but she says she isn't worried about this and for good reason. Now check this out. A fourth grader in Iowa is taking what some consider to be a way to pass time to an international level. Irene Fay won a World Chess Championship in Panama for players nine and under. It all happened after her parents signed her up for chess club. She had to win two championships in the state of Iowa before competing at Panama. So yeah, then the, the coach approached us said that okay, she's good. The first time we think okay, maybe it's just a yeah, just a uh, normal compliment. But the the second time she seriously approach us again, say she's really good. Then we could, okay, maybe uh, she does got some talent. And that isn't all Faye does. Faye is also good at math and she loves running track. She hopes one day to be a scientist. Just ahead on nine on the positive side, a unique way to give tourists a memorable experience in the great outdoors. How one man is doing that with the help of a few furry friends. We have a few more stories for you now on nine on the positive side. We're taking you out to Spain for this next story where tourists there are getting something to howl about. One man is taking people on hikes with his very own wolf pack. Ian Lee shows us more. This is no ordinary dog walk and it's not quite dancing with wolves, but tourists in Spain get to be leaders of the pack. Bueno, estos son domesticados. The wolves are domesticated, but their behavior is wild, says owner Miguel Carrillo. He raised three litters of wolves after his daughter joked they'd be better than a dog. When they're not walking on the wild side, he takes the pack into cities to work with children with autism. People are drawn to them, Carrillo says. They spend time petting and taking pictures. But in their natural habitat, the wolves hit their pace. When you share the environment with them, you can see their instincts. They behave differently, says this tourist. Each guest takes a leash, make that a strong leash, as they meander through the forest. On a walk in the woods, the wolves link the people to what's important. It was extraordinary, she says. I recommend it to help disconnect from the world and enjoy nature while answering the call of the wild. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Wow, imagine that. That's an experience people will not forget. Now, out in England, every year around this time, boatloads of workers take to this river with one royal responsibility, counting. The Swan Census runs for five days, covering a 79-mile stretch of this river. It's a tradition dating back to the 12th century, when the British monarchy claimed ownership of all wild swans. Right now, the Queen Swan marker says numbers are low than what they were last year. And that is all the time we have for you today. But before we go, of course, one more last thing to show you. Enjoy this video of an ostrich race. Yeah, look at them go, those ostriches. This is all happening in Minnesota. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone. We'll see you next time on 9 on the Positive Side.